Good morning guys. Today we're going to work with solving systems of equations, but now we're going to have three variables in the equation. Uh, very important if, to notice if you've got three variables, you've got to have three equations. You need one equation to hold each variable in check. The process is the same process that we worked with before solving, but we have to use the algebraic techniques. We can't solve these by graphing because, as we saw in the last section, uh, being able to graph uh, equations in three dimensions, which is trying to get the planes and then see where those intersect, uh, it's not very easy to do. So instead, we're going to go with our algebraic techniques, substitution, linear combination, same things as we used before. <coughs> so substitution. Pick one, plug it in for the other one. I always use this if they give me one that's already solved out. So that's the strategy I'm going to use here. If they give me one that's really easy to solve out. So in this problem here, z equals negative 4, I'm going to substitute that into both of the other two equations. So I'm going to take my x minus 2y plus z, and we just said z is negative 4. Second equation negative 4x plus y minus 2 times z, which is negative 4, equals 1. So z equals negative 4, so we just took the first two equations and plug z, just substituted it in to both of them. Clean it up, so we now have, oh, let's move it over here, we got room x minus 2y minus 4 equals negative 4. Negative 4x plus y, which we said it's an x, plus 8 equals 1. Uh, from there, it's just a two variable system. So we're going to go through, and I'm going to do linear combination on this one. So the substitution doesn't mean I have to substitute every step. I can just substitute when I need it. And so in this case, I'll substitute on the first step. From there, let's look at what we've got. X minus 2y, remember I need to get my variables all lined up. So I've got my x, I've got my y, I'm add my 4 over, add my 8 over, subtract my 8 over. So we get negative 4 plus 4 equals 0, negative 4x plus y equals 1 minus 8, which is negative 7. Uh, from there, you could do a substitution if you wanted to. So this y has a, lead co or has a coefficient of 1. It's easy to solve for. x has a coefficient of 1. It's easy to solve for. I like linear combination or elimination. It um, goes a little bit faster. I think picking the y's to get rid of, smaller numbers to work with, right? Getting 1 to be 2 is a lot easier than getting 1 to be 4. Not easier, but it gives you smaller numbers right there. So let's work off of this one. We'll take this top equation. Actually, I'm going to take the bottom equation. Top equation is fine. And if I want 1 and 2 to match up, I need to bank the bottom into a 2. So I just put 2 out here and show that I am going to distribute that to every single term. Distribute it to every single term. Oh, I made a mistake here. 1 minus 8 is negative 7. <clears throat> go through, do your arithmetic, top equation we didn't change because we liked the 2 on the y, bottom equation we multiplied by 2 to make it negative 8x, plus 2y, see how we have opposite coefficients, that's what we're looking for, to be able to eliminate the y's, and negative 14. Combine those two lines together, so x and negative 8 is negative 7x, Negative 2y plus 2y cancels, or eliminates. That's why we call it elimination sometimes. Um, and then we get negative 14. 0 and negative 14. Finish solving, you get negative 7. Divide it into negative 14. x is equal to 2. So we got x equals 2. We have z equals negative 4. So you finish the process by substituting again. So just pick either of your equations you've got remaining and plug in your uh, x and your z. I'm going to go to this first equation. It's got smaller numbers in it. <coughs> or we could use the second equation because y is already has a coefficient of 1. It's your personal preference on that. Um, I'll go with the first one, though. So x minus 2y plus z 
equals negative 4. Well, we just said x was 2. We said z, they told us at the beginning, was negative 4. Do your arithmetic. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Move your 2 over. So add 2. So move your negative 2 over. So we're going to add 2. Uh, so we get negative 2y minus 2 divided by the coefficient. Try that again. Negative 2y equals negative 2 divided by our coefficient. And we get y equals 1. You always want to go through and check it out. A lot of arithmetic, multiplication, addition, division going on here. So just double check. Make sure you didn't miss something at one point. Uh, so if I plug in... Remember, we check by just plugging our answers back in, see if they work in all three equations. So if I take my 1, plug it in for y, 2 in for x, I get 2 minus 2 times 1 plus negative 4. Well, 2 minus 2 times 1 <coughs> is 0, plus a negative 4 is negative 4 equals negative 4. It checks right there. Here, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 plus my y, which is 1. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. So negative, sorry, yeah, negative 8 and positive 8 will cancel. So I'm left with the 1 equal to 1. And the third equation says z equals negative 4. It's already solved. So we see that uh, these values do work in all three equations. Now when we write this, we want to write our answer as an ordered triple like we saw on the um, graphing in three dimensions. Uh, lecture. So x is 2, y is 1, z is negative 4. And that's how you solve uh, linear systems in three variables by substitution. Uh, next we're going to look at how to solve it by linear combination from the very go, uh, from the get-go. Now we're going to look at solving a three variable system uh, by linear combination or elimination as it's uh, often called. Notice how none of these variables and none of these equations are nice, neat, really easy, almost solved ones like we had in the last example. Um, so we're going to go with our linear combination strategy. Um, pick a variable. It's easy to get all the coefficients the same. Uh, notice how the y's, we have a negative 3 and positive 3. Remember, I can only combine two at a time, so I'm going to pair them up two at a time. So negative 3, positive 3, negative 3, positive 3. Um, so we could group the first two and group the second two and work from there. But that's kind of boring because those are already neat. I'm going to focus on the Z's. They're a little bit different. So I'm going to pair up my first two equations and get this 3 and this negative 1 to be the same. And then I'm going to pair up uh, these bottom two equations and get this negative 1 and negative 1 to be the same. Or sorry, to be opposites. Uh, so we'll first take these first two. So I've got x minus 3y plus 3z equals negative 4. 2x plus 3y minus z equals 15. All right, so I'm focusing on the z's because that's what I picked to get rid of. Now I've got positive 3 and negative 1. They're opposite signs. I've got to get them opposite numbers. So how do I turn a negative 1 into a, a, a negative 3? Just multiply that whole equation by 3. And you can write it at the end. You can write it at the beginning. It doesn't matter where you write that. Uh, it's not going to impact your problem whatsoever. I'll write it here at the beginning just so it looks like traditional distributive property work. And you go through and you just distribute it to everything. Make sure you're getting it all the way to the constant because uh, probably the most common mistake on these is people forget to do the other side of the equal sign. So we get, oh, let's see what we got. X minus 3y, first equation doesn't change, plus 3z equals negative 4. Second equation, 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 3y is 9y. 3 times negative z is negative 3z. So there we go, opposite coefficients. 3 times 15 is 45. From there, we do our combination step. 
x and 6x, x, negative 3y and 9y is positive 6y. 3z and negative 3z cancel, give us 0z's. And negative 4 and 45 gives us 41. <clears throat> so we get the equation from combining the first two together. So we combine those first two together, and it produced that equation there. Now we're going to combine the second two together. And there's no rule that says you have to use the, the middle equation twice. I could do the first one with the middle and the first with the third. Or I could do the third with, you know, any, any grouping like that. But I don't always have to do the middle one with the first one and the middle one with the third one. It's however you want to do that. <coughs> that was just the order I happened to pick. Um, typically, you'll look for what the easiest grouping is going to be, but a lot of the times it really won't matter. It's going to be about the same amount of work on each one. All right, so that's our first grouping. Let's look at our second combination. Because the goal is to get it from three variables down to two variables and two variables down to one variable. So for this second grouping, 2x plus 3y minus z equals 15 and 4x minus 3y minus z equals 19. Now the important thing is, see how we're left with an x and a y remaining here? I've got to have an x and a y remaining here. So I have to eliminate the same variable in the second grouping as I did in the first grouping. Z and negative, or sorry, negative Z, negative Z to get them to be opposite coefficients. They're already the same number, negative one and negative one. You need to make them opposite. So let's just multiply one of them. How do I turn a negative one into a positive one? We multiply it by negative one. And it doesn't matter which equation I use. I'm just going to do the second one here. Distribute it to all four parts, all three coefficients and your constant, so that we get 2x plus 3y, and our first equation is not changing, minus z equals 15. Second equation, negative 4x plus 3y. Negative 1 and negative 1 gives us the positive 1z we're looking for. Negative 1 and 19 is negative 19. From there we do our combination step. 2x and negative 4x is negative 2x. 3y and 3y is 6y. Negative z and positive z cancel each other out. And 15 minus 19, or 15 plus negative 19, is negative 4. So the second grouping gave me negative 2x plus 6y equals negative 4. Now we have this new system we're going to solve. So we did linear combination, group two of them together, eliminate a variable, group two more together, eliminate uh, the, the same variable, that'll leave you a two variable system and you go through and solve from there. Whether you want to do substitution or linear combination is up to you and it really just depends on what the problem's got there. I think elimination is going to be really good, or linear combination, whatever you want to call it right now. Because see how the y's both have a six for the coefficient, so real easy. We can put, that's not a minus one on the end, that's times negative one on the end, because I'm just going to take this positive six and multiply it by negative one to make it a negative six. Go through, first equation stays the same, 7x plus 6y equals 41. Negative one and negative two is 2x. Negative 1 and 6y is negative 6y. Negative 1 and negative 4 is 4. And you can start to see how it's coming together. 7x plus 2x is 9x. Negative, sorry, positive 6y and negative 6y are going to cancel. 41 and 4 are going to give us 45. Remember, make sure those actually cancel before you cross them out. We don't just cross out at that step. Those two numbers better be identical numbers with opposite sides. And then from there we divide by 9 and 45 divided by 9 is 5. So there's our first value. We got x equals 5. Now we got to work all the way back through and um, get the y and get the z. So we can go back to these two equations we worked with right here. Pick either equation. It doesn't matter which one you want to pick. Um, I like the second equation. 
Second equation's got a little bit smaller numbers, so we can work with it. So negative 2x plus 6y equals negative 4. And if I would worked with it here, it'd still give me the same value. It doesn't matter which step I grab it because they're equivalent the whole time. Uh, so we're going to take the 5, plug it in for x. So negative 10 plus 6y equals negative 4. Move our 10 over by, by um, addition. 6y equals negative 4 and 10 is 6. So y equals 1. So we've got 5 for the x, we've got 1 for the y, and now we just go back to the very beginning, pick any equation you want, and we're solving for z, so you probably want to pick one that's got small numbers and z's um, simplified a little bit more already. So I think this one's not a bad one here. So I'm going to take 2x plus 3y minus z equals 15. x is 5. So that's 2 times 5. <clears throat> y is 1. Z we don't know. Z is Z. And it equals 15. Let's go through and do the arithmetic. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 1 is 3. Minus z equals 15. So 13 minus z equals 15. Do a little fancy math here. Watch this. I'm going to add my z over and subtract my 15 over. And what that's going to do, 13 minus 15 is going to be negative 2. And when you take negative z and add it to the other side, it becomes positive z. So I just switch these two places and change their signs. Uh, it's the same work as if I had subtracted the 13 over and got negative 2, sorry, positive 2, and then divided the negative 1 coefficient. So we get negative 2 equals z for my third variable. Now remember we write them as an ordered triple. So the answer to this solution set would be x is 5, y is 1, and z is negative 2. Now if you had variables that weren't x, y, and z, um, you can just write it x equals, or like say you had a, b, and c, a equals b equals c equals, or if you wanted to define your ordered triple as a comma b comma c, then you could write it as an ordered triple. Um, but anytime we're working with x, y's, and z's, let's go ahead and get in the habit of writing our answers as ordered triples. Just gives us, uh, lets us use that notation a little bit more. All right, that's solving systems of equations in three variables, just like solving systems of equations in two variables, just more numbers, so more equations. Still going to go through the same process whether you substitution or elimination. Um, I will see you in class tomorrow, guys.